are at our very first rental property. Look, many of you I know are struggling right now. A lot of you are suffering with a lot of fear, both real and imagined. Some from the outside world, given the current lockdown and crisis that we're currently dealing with, to other less real things that are swimming around your brain, things that are holding you back from becoming an entrepreneur, taking that leap for that business that you've always wanted to do, investing in real estate, or just getting out of that nine to five job. You know, there are things holding you back. Well, you are in luck because my guest today is two times New York best-selling author, John Assaraf. He, of course, you may know him from the incredibly popular movie, The Secret, which really just exploded and put his name on the international map. He has a brand new book out right now. It's called Inner Size, The New Science to Unlock Your Brain's Hidden Power, which is already a number one bestseller. He's the, one of the leading mindset and behavioral experts in the world. And he is joining us right now here on the show. John, it's a great, it's a great privilege and a great honor to have you here on the show. John, welcome to the show. Thanks so much. It's great to be with you. Well, I wanted to first start off, I'd be remiss, I think, if we didn't talk about the current state of affairs. It's hard to go anywhere these days. Well, literally, it's hard to go anywhere these days because we're all under <laughs> lockdown. Uh, literally and figuratively, though, we're sort of locked down if we were going to start a business, if we were looking to transition out of our current job and start something new, a new entrepreneurial venture. I think many, many people are held back by fear, both real yeah. and sometimes, you know, imagined. Talk about this current state of affairs. Has that, how has it affected your entrepreneurial life right now, your business? And what can people do if they're... They're just sitting there thinking, I've, I, I don't know where to start. I don't know what to do now that I've, maybe I've lost some hope. I mean, this is a, I mean, the most opportune time for what I do uh, in the world with our brain research and understanding the, the circuits in the brain that turn off or on, uh, fear being, you know, one cir circuit, uncertainty, stress, et cetera. And so to answer that question completely, if you think about, the hierarchy of your brain, right? We've been evolving as a human species for about two and a half million years. And the brain's number one priority is safety and survival. And so when we think about, you know, survival, when this coronavirus, you know, is hitting us and we've never experienced this type of a pandemic in most of our lives um, that spreads this fast, but also has the uh, ability to kill then people's heightened awareness of what if I get it is causing their brains to go on overdrive by activating the fear circuit. Now take that and couple it now with most people not having the training on emotional management or mental focus. And then add on top of that, financial challenges. So some people are losing or have lost their jobs millions of businesses will go under because of this. Industries have shut down right now. Some will survive, some won't within those industries. And so we are being neurologically attacked at the financial, emotional, mental, and physical level of our being. So that means that we are gonna be in an active state of stress all day long and in a reactive state. And what happens is when we do that too much, we actually are hurting our immune system, we're hurting the thinking center of our brain, we're hurting a variety of different parts of our brain that are actually required more than ever right now to be calm so we can respond. And so for me, my business is booming right now because I'm being asked to help corporations and individuals and athletes and people are displaced to navigate through this. And, and my book right now is doing great, the, the one that's behind me, Inner Size, um, it's all about, you know, how do you um, level up your brain power right now um, and take advantage of all the latest technologies and methodologies. Yeah, it's a new, it's a it's a bestseller right now. And I think it's a, and I will have a link, make sure in the show notes so everyone can grab the new book. And this is a time to really be reading that book. You talked about this fear response. And I think maybe the analogy that we often think of is the idea of you know a gazelle being chased by a lion or a cheetah or something oh, right. and yeah. that gazelle we see that heightened state of fear that they're they're trying to survive for those few minutes but then something amazing happens with that animal it goes back to living its normal life a short time later the heart rate reduces they go back to grazing in the savanna 
We don't. And most of us, forget the coronavirus, I think most of us live that way all the time. That's why medication and everything else. Now you mentioned that adding this on top of that. So what are some real basic techniques, baby steps that someone who's never done this before, but now it needs to because it's a matter of survival right now being on this lockdown? Sure. So behind me, you're going to see I have Frankenstein's monster right there, uh -huh. right? And then I have Albert Einstein up there. Right. And a lot of people ask me, like, why do you have Frankenstein's monster and uh, Albert Einstein there? And I share with them, um, we have different parts of our brain that have evolved over time, right? So we had that instinctual part of our brain, the reptilian or lizard brain, then we had the mammalian emotional brain, then we had the neocortex, the thinking genius part of our brain. Uh, the reason I start off with that is this, when we're in this state of stress, Frankenstein's hyperactive, and Frankenstein is usually running these what if negative loops. So what if I catch the virus? What if I lose my money? What if my relationship suffers? What if my mother or father or sister or brother die because of this? What if my business is closing? When we do that, we're actually activating the sympathetic nervous system in our body, which is the fight or flight response. And that's perfectly normal, but if you're operating you know, from that space all the time, it's really, really exhausting. So the reason I wrote the book, Inner Size, is to create inner sizes for people to be able to become aware of that state. And so let me give you an example. When we're in that heightened stressed state, I'll call it, we want to actually deactivate the sympathetic nervous system. We want to switch a system to the parasympathetic nervous system. Well, think of it as a light switch. You know, up, light goes on, down, light goes off. So when we take um, inner size number one, I call take six, calm the circuits. So what does that mean? It means that if you take six deep breaths in through your nose, gently and slowly, and deep, and then you release it slower than that through your mouth like you're blowing out through a straw. Just six times of doing that over about a minute to 70 or 80 seconds deactivates the stress center, reactivates the calm and response center. So now I've brought blood flow back to my genius Einstein part of my brain, and now I can say, okay, let me do inner size number two, which is called AYA. And AYA stands for awareness, intention, action. So awareness of what? Well, I wanna be aware of what are my thoughts right now? Are they positive or negative? Are they constructive or destructive? Are these thoughts empowering me or causing me to be in a stressed state? Now, whenever we do an awareness inner size, we always do it without judgment, blame, shame, guilt, or justification. Let me repeat, no judgment, blame, shame, guilt, or justification, just pure awareness. And it's in an aware state that now we have recaptured our ability to have choice. So if now I can choose positive or negative, constructive or destructive, what is my intention right now? Well, my intention is to focus on a solution. My intention is to do something productive. My intention is to eat something healthy. My intention is to focus on a solution, not the problem. Now, in a calm, relaxed state, I'm in control versus me being in a reactive, automatic state. Then, if I ask myself the next A, so it's AYA, awareness, intention, action, what's one very, very, very small action step I can take focusing on the positive or the solution. Not 10 steps, because now we overwhelm the brain again. But if we reduce it to the ridiculous, just with those first two steps, now I can still observe the crisis. I can still be aware of all the challenges and the threats, real or imagined, but now I'm in control instead of fear or panic running the show. I love that. I mean, Dan, you're good. I hope everyone's paying attention at home. Read the book because this is powerful stuff. And because, you know, talking about something that's earth shattering here where they need to do 10 things, right? It's just that one little baby step. And I see it in my wife. I see it myself. Usually I have a superpower, which is when arrows are flying at me, I have the, the, the ability to get focused and move on. My wife can 
there's 8 million things flying at her. She'll maybe not take an action on any of it because it's all sort of coming and she's got to deal with the kids and we, you know, whatever it happens to be. So we all- We must uh, be married to the same person. <laughs> We're all- I'm, you know, I'm like you. Yeah. And I'm I, like- Exactly. And I, <laughs> as maybe that's being entrepreneurs, I don't know in that way, but it's, a, it's something in us. But even in this moment, this difficult time that we're having, I found myself, you know, walking in circles and thinking, okay, what can I do? I've got all of these ideas, but I don't feel like I can take action on any one of them. But I found that you're absolutely right. If I can just be calm, spend some time doing a meditation and then come back and I made a small list of the action items that I want to tackle and then just go after that first one. Talk about that from a business perspective, John, if you can. You've built multiple uh, million dollar companies. Um, you've done it all. You've raised capital, you've done it all. So if there's a young entrepreneur who's caught in this moment, who was thinking about starting their business for the first time, but now they're sitting there with this little bit of fear or a lot of fear, how do you take them through that action step to start a business, to, to break through some of those blockages? Yeah. In the same way I, I love it. I love entrepreneurs. I mean, you know, the entrepreneurs around the world, we're the ones who hire and innovate and, and create. So there's a couple of different things I want to share with you based on what you just shared. So number one, that's especially important right now is what I call is the three P's like Peter Paul. So three P's. The first P is perspective, right? So perspective as everything is coming at us right now that is giving us this sense of overwhelm and uncertainty, which triggering you know, the stress and fear centers, we have to remember that this too shall pass. So we are a very resilient species. So it's perspective first, and then the second P is for poise. And poise, when you are calm and you're able to respond, you can then focus on the third P, which is process. Right, so perspective, poise, and process. When you have those three, so what is a process to take an idea or to take all of the stuff that's going on right now and to be able to give our brain the path so that it does not feel overwhelmed or confused? And so to help people do that, I developed a little acronym. It's called GOPA, G-O-P-A. And so GOPA means take everything out of your head um, because we can only process consciously four to seven things, okay, at any given time. That's why we have phone numbers that are seven digits. So our conscious brain is only able to process four to seven things at any given time, but we're working on 15 or 20 right now. And so the first thing you do is you get it out of your head onto a computer or onto your board or onto a piece of paper. And you generalize, get everything out of your head. Just start writing. I, I have this idea and this idea and this threat and this possibility and this might get hurt and get it out of your head. And so from generalize, organize it into buckets. What are the health things, the wealth things, the relationship things, the career things, the business things, and put everything that you've taken out of your head into these buckets. So now we've generalized, now we've organized into buckets. So that's the G-O. The P is now prioritize each list. So in the health bucket, whether it's physical health, mental health, emotional health, whatever it is, what is the um, um, number one thing okay, that you need to do in that bucket. So if we prioritize out of the 10 things in each bucket, we might have 70 things. In the physical health, what's the number one thing you need to do right now that's gonna be the biggest needle mover, the most critical, the most urgent or important? And then the A stands for actualize. Now I'm gonna take the top, let's say five things, and then I'm going to take it and I'm going to put it into my calendar. I'm going to say, this one's going to take me two hours. This one's going to take me five hours. This one's going to take me every day for 30 minutes. And now I've just taken all the stuff out of my head. Now I have a process to create a plan, which my brain loves because it sees a path out. It reduces the overwhelm, eliminates the confusion. Okay. And now I'm able to take action. Now, I also want to, to mention one other thing here. Is it a fact that in crisis times or times of crisis, there are also opportunities? Oh, heck yeah. Certainly, I come from the real heck estate yeah. world, right? I mean, absolutely. Sure. <laughs> So I come from the real estate world as well, and I've invested in the stock market, and I've built companies. And every single downturn 
also has an opportunity either right there in the downturn or on the upswing. So depending on your industry and depending on what you want to do, right now may be the perfect time for you to be planning your infrastructure so that when the market is ready, you can take off. For some people, right now is when you should be doubling down on hiring amazing talent, doubling down on your marketing, doubling down on your sales processes. Right now is the time to be raising money to be able to invest in real estate or the stock market if that's what you like. Right now is the time to be looking for capital to put to, put to work when the market shifts in your business. So right now is not the time to be resting, hoping, waiting, wishing, and praying. Right now, I've, I'm working 16, 18 hours a day right now because I'm, I've seen this before. I'm like so excited, I can hardly sleep. I got up at 3 a.m. this morning, you know, I slept six hours. And I'm like, I'm on the phone with people around the world right now, and we're planning and executing to be able to ride this wave right now, uh, but also take advantage of certain opportunities in the stock market and in real estate in my case. Oh, and real estate, in my case as well, we've never been busier around our office right now. You talked about how busy you guys have been. It's, we were on the phone with uh, folks from India, from Australia. Um, it's an incredible time right now. And we've, we've actually just hired three additional people because of, of everything we're, we're looking at. But I love it, being able to go back and be able to say, hey, I'm home right now. I've got a lot of time. I've got some extra time. Go back to our sales process right now. What about the things that are working? How can we improve upon those things? What are the things that aren't working as well? Can we refine? And, and we've been dialing through a whole bunch of our digital stuff right now, looking at every little piece of it. So I, it. I, I, I didn't talk to you beforehand, but I'm glad we're, <laughs> I'm glad we're doing what you, would, you advised to do. Um, and it, there's, another piece to this. there's another piece to this, right? And that is wherever you place your attention, um, that's what your brain is going to process and help you figure out. Now, you've got to remember, this is the most powerful tool in the known universe. Um, and whatever it is that we focus on, your brain expands upon. So are you focusing on why you can't or are you focus on how you will? Are you focusing on all the opportunities that are gone or are you focusing on all the opportunities that are right there as well? We can't usually focus on both unless we are trained. And a trained person realizes there's always an up to a down, an inside to an outside, the opposite side of the coin, a positron, an electron. Uh, you can go all the way down to the quantum field, all the way right back up to the physical world we live in. You cannot have one without the other. It just does not exist in nature. So what are you focusing on? is really the key here. Talk about the emotional the emotional connection to this, because sometimes we, we say, I'm gonna to listen to John, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna take six deep breaths, refocus my attention, which by the way, I think I actually heard from a Navy SEAL um, that I interviewed a number of years ago. I think that's a similar tactic that Navy SEALs use in the heat of the battle Ooh. to take six that's deep true. breaths in that moment. Um, and it calms Ooh. them down to be refocused, which is amazing. Um, so someone does that, they get focused, and then they hear that little Frankenstein voice come back in again. How do you yeah. keep that voice, acknowledge it, say hi to it, and let it go back on its merry way? Great question. So first, um, there's a philosophy and a, and, a, and a perspective that I have. Um, you know, are you your hand? Uh, no. Are you your nose? Uh, no. Are you your foot? No, I'm neither of those things. Are you your brain? Uh, no, because you can actually control your brain. So what is it that's controlling your brain? Are you your thoughts? Are you your emotions? Are you your feelings? No, you have emotions. You have thoughts. You have fingers and, 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 and organs, et cetera, but you're not those things. And so when we have a negative thought that percolates up like effervescent bubbles, you know, from a, a soda can. Um, could you be aware that all of those negative thoughts that you weren't born with are somehow in your implicit memory and something's triggering those thoughts and they just percolate up and you can observe them and you can listen to Frankenstein and go, hey, Frankie, thank you. Let's let this go. Uh, I put on Wake Up Einstein. And, and, and focus on what I'm gonna do right now. Um, emotions are triggered in the subconscious mind based on patterns 
um, that have been uh, repeated over years and years and years, and they give rise to automatic neural firings that causes uh, feelings. And so in a state of awareness, I could be a choice to pay attention to the thought or to let it go, to um, harbor that emotion that's disempowering me or to let it go like a Hollywood actress can go from being really damn angry to cry. <laughs> oh my God, that was so much fun, right? Um, how do they do that? How do they go from this to that? They practice. So don't get caught up with your emotions and don't get caught up with feelings. If you want to be a victim of them, okay but you can be victorious over them and you can gain more mental and emotional control by practicing mental and emotional control. It's a neuro muscle. And if you haven't practiced the muscle, then it controls you. But if you've practiced the muscle, um, then you can build self-confidence. You can be aware of fear and let it go. You can learn how to be focused. You can learn how to be aware through mindfulness training. You can learn so many new empowering techniques to strengthen your core, what I call our neuro muscles, so that you're no longer a victim of fear. Think of it this way. I just want to give it, it just popped into my head. Imagine you're driving down the street with your car and a light pops up on your dash. You don't reach to the seat next to you, get a hammer and hit the light. The light is just a signal that something maybe in the engine or in the back, you know, tire, it might be low on air. It's a signal. Fear is a signal. Emotions are signals that are automatically triggered to make you aware. I love that. Now, that's, a great, that's a great analogy because we don't just sit there and stare also at that red light. For, otherwise, we get in an accident, right? Right. Yeah. And so it's a signal. Feelings are signals. Emotions are signals. What most people you know, don't know and aren't aware of is this. And this is why I wrote you know, the book, Inner Size, is we've never been given the user's manual and then we've never been given the opportunity to practice uh, our, our mental fortitude. We've never been able to practice eliminating limiting beliefs or fears or self-image issues. Um, those are the things that hold us back from achieving our goals and dreams. There's only four things that hold people back. A lack of knowledge or skill, which causes people to feel doubtful, which triggers the fear response. Uh, fears like fear of uh, failure or success in failing or being disappointed or being embarrassed, ashamed, ridiculed or judged. That deactivates the motivational center. Uh, Self-esteem. We have a vision or a goal of what we want, but we secretly don't believe that we deserve it. Um, and then we have limiting beliefs. I'm too young, I'm too old, I'm too Asian, too Caucasian. Uh, the coronavirus is holding me back. My mother, my father, my sister, my brother. We have all these limiting beliefs and our brain just goes, okay, if that's what your belief is, like I didn't create you, you created you. If you wanna keep running and operating your life from that place, I'll just make that your reality. <laughs> right, and for so many people, that's what it becomes, that new neural programming. Um, before I let you go, John, and I know this is probably a whole other episode we could do in your book, the, I mean, the title of the book, and you don't have to give us all of them because I want people to read the book, but Unlocking yeah. Your Brain's Hidden Power. What are some of the nuggets of hidden power that you and your team have been able to research and cultivate for this new book? What are those little nuggets that maybe we didn't know existed before? So, I mean, everybody should know by now that we have, you know, the conscious part of a brain and we have the subconscious part of the brain and the power center is the subconscious part of the brain. But most people don't know, you know, how to use both of those powers. And so your conscious mind is used for choosing what you want. Your conscious mind, you know, you're using for awareness. Your conscious mind, you know, you can use your willpower. Your conscious mind, you can use your imagination. You can choose those things. But the subconscious mind is where your habits are. It's called the implicit memory system. And so if we um, listen to something over and over again, or we talk about something over and over again, or we read something over and over again, or do something over and over and over again, it goes from conscious effort to a subconscious pattern to conserve energy, and it runs automatically. And so some of the greatest discoveries in the last year to two years is how long does it take to rewire the implicit, the subconscious pattern so it becomes dominant over a pattern that may be there right now? And the answer is 
between 66 days and 365 days. So if I have a, you know, a habitual pattern of X, whatever X is, and I've been um, that way for let's say three years, five years, 10 years, plan on 66 days to a year to create a new pattern that then overrides the old pattern and it becomes dominant and automatic. So the old belief that it was 21 days to develop a new habit right. is just plain wrong right now. Wow. Well, I and by the way, and this is why most people don't change, right? They, they, they go on a diet mm -hmm. for two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, they maybe lose weight, they feel great, and then they go, oh, okay, let me go back to all my old behaviors. So true. <laughs> or, you know, if they're in sales, you know, they'll they'll behave a certain way for a day or a week or two using willpower and, and their conscious muscle, uh, but then they don't sustain it long enough to make that a habit. And guess what? We are all creatures of habit, and every human being is 100% disciplined to their current habits. I got to ask you this before we let you go then, how do we, because I'm all about the tactics then. So if I know we've got a 66 day window, right? We might be under this lockdown for 66 days or more. I mean, it seems like all signs it. are pointing to that, right? We yeah. have an opportunity now, maybe to get out our iPads, create a calendar, grab good notes yeah. or things or whatever app you use on your iPad or iOS device or whatever, and map this out. Can you give us something tactical that someone could do right now while they're home to chart a path for these 66 days? Sure. Um, let's make it 100 days instead of 66, because that's kind of like the minimum. Right. All of my students, <laughs> yeah. so all of my students around the world um, that buy any of my brain training programs, whether it's for money or eliminate fear, procrastination or weight loss, whatever it is, um, I let them know if you're not going to commit to altering the mindset, the emotions and the behavior for 100 days, don't buy my programs. But if you are committed to the result, I'll give you the process. And so anything that you want to start, start off by developing a simple, small habit first. So let me give you an example. Let's say um, you want to brush your teeth. Um, so you want to floss your teeth, floss one tooth every day for the next 30 days. Just have your floss there and just go one tooth, drop it, let it go, do it tomorrow or do it again tonight. Now. Why do we do it that way? Well, we want to reduce it to the ridiculous to reduce the resistance. Reduce to the ridiculous to reduce the resistance. So if I floss one tooth today and I do it again tonight and then tomorrow and then tomorrow night and the next day and that night, just make it as easy so you can't say no. So one call, one paragraph, you know, put on your running shoes, do, you know, five, five of these if you want to get in shape as simple and easy as possible for 100 days. I, I wanted to say, um, not to interrupt you, but I just did the exact same thing. I wanted to start doing push uh, pull-ups and we have a thing, this gym, this outdoor parkour equipment. And I said, okay, I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna do one pull-up. And sure enough, I did one pull-up. <laughs> that was my first step in this process. <laughs> and all these other guys are there all afternoon and I felt like the biggest wimp, but I was like, okay, that was my first step. Bingo. If you reduce the neurological and physical and biological resistance to the ridiculous, so you do one, guess what you just did? You have a goal, you made a commitment, you took action, you just built a positive neural network. Now, let's say you do that again tomorrow and the next day and the next day. Here's what I can promise you. In about a week or two weeks, you'll do two pull-ups because you're already there. And in three weeks, you might do three. So, the habit is more important than the intensity or duration at first. The habit is more important than the intensity or duration at first. So if we focus on, let me build the habit and the process, I can add as much as I want once the habit is driving me. But for me to drive the habit initially, let me be patient and let me build the pattern that within a hundred days becomes a normalized, plan or pattern that wants to activate itself and once you have that then we say well you know what uh, let's do five let's do ten let's do three sets so whatever it is whether it's for your health or wealth relationship career business develop the habit first increase the intensity and duration after 
right? And I often say, look, we have, even if you do work a nine to five job and you sleep eight hours a day, every day, you work for somebody else, you still have 72 hours left in your week. And now with this lockdown, everyone at home, maybe you could build that pattern, you know, 5.30 in the morning, every day get up and write that paragraph that you talked about, meditate for 20 minutes, that was your goal. And then once you go back to that nine to five job, now that pattern has been built in this 100 day lockdown that we're dealing with. One of the things I'll, I'll, I'll leave you with this is, um, there are key or keystone patterns that when you build those, they're like the foundation to other levels. So for example, you mentioned meditation. Mm -hmm. A meditation practice that you build for you know, five or 10 or 20 minutes a day activates the genius part of your brain, activates your immune system, raises your IQ, calms you down. So Einstein's working more than, there are, there's a hundred benefits from just meditation. Wow. Let's go to exercise. You know, as soon as you start to exercise, you build confidence, you build certainty, you develop energy, you activate mitochondrial energy. I mean, there's, there's another hundred minutes. So what is one? And again, I'm going to reduce this to the ridiculous for everybody. What is one keystone habit that you can start? And then what is one disempowering habit you can release? Hmm. Right? If you just focus on that, forget about 10 of them. One, one right now, 100 days, stop one, start one, guess, guess what happens? That becomes an exponential curve for you of growth. I love that. I love that. John, you're amazing. And uh, Thank you, it's a real treat to have you here on the show. And I want everyone to run out right now. Well, don't run out because you can't leave the house. But just Amazon. go to Amazon, grab your Kindle, grab it on iBooks, on yeah. your iPad, wherever you read books, Kobo, everywhere else. Download this book mm -hmm. right now. It's called Inner Size. Um, it's the new science to, uh, to unlock your brain's hidden power. And it's already a number one hit. So, John, it's been a real treat having you here. Any final thoughts you want to share with us in this crazy time before we let you go? Uh, well, I think I started off with this is we're gonna get through this and do everything you can to make sure that you do. So a lot of times, you know, when I ask people, you know, did you do everything you could to build that business? Did you do everything you could, you know, to save your marriage? Did you do everything you could and a lot of times people tell me, no, I didn't do everything I could. Well, I'm going to share something with people that um, may be a little harsh. If you don't do everything right now, there's a higher possibility that you will suffer needlessly. Because we know what you can do to level up your immune system right now. We know what you can do through social distancing right now to stay away and reduce your chance of getting the coronavirus right now. See, the, the problem isn't the coronavirus. The problem is the healthcare system can't handle millions of people getting it together. And so if you can do everything possible, you know, mentally, emotionally, physically, financially right now, do it now. Don't live a life of regrets. Make a decision, be committed, and you'll be happy with the results. And to your point, don't just do the bare minimum, which is 66 days. Right. Do 100. Right. Put it, go all in if you're going to do it. I love that. So you already corrected me. No 66 days shortcut. Uh, John, it's been great getting to know you here. I'd love to have you back you. on once we get through all this craziness. Thank you for helping us get through this. Um, it's going right. to make a measurable impact on our lives. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, John. Thanks for having me. You bet. And thanks to all of you for downloading and subscribing and making this one of our top shows. We really appreciate it. And thanks, uh, thanks to John for being a great guest. I want you to go get his book right now. And I think it could have a profound impact on your life. We'll see you next time, everyone. Much love to all of you.